Hey guys, so today I'm trying out a bunch of new drugstore makeup. Not quite a full face, but mostly a full face of some things that I recently purchased from Ulta, as well as some things that I recently received in PR from Makeup Revolution that I'm really excited to test out. And I thought we could also do a wear test as part of this video. I'm filming this first thing today so we can see how the products wear throughout the day. I have already gone ahead and applied my foundation and concealer because I don't have any new products in those categories to try out. I did stick with the drugstore theme. I'm wearing one of my favorite foundation combos, the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Foundation and the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. So that's what I have on as my foundation. And then I also applied some of the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum to the under eyes. And the first product we're going to test today is the Revolution eye bright corrector in the shade light to medium i've tried this a handful of times now and the formula is very interesting it reminds me a lot actually of the becca under eye corrector it has that very soft but tacky texture you can see just one tap gives me like a good amount of product so i'm gonna warm that up and i'm gonna tap this over my concealer i think i've found that that's my favorite way to apply this this is a very brightening corrector. Like, do you see how it just like bounces a lot of light off of that under eye? And some of that is coming from the finish itself. Like this does have a very dewy finish, almost a little dewier than I think I would prefer because I mean, I, I always set my under eyes, but sometimes I feel like I have to use so much powder to set this down and even then some of that dewiness will still like seep through the powder so that nyx bear with me concealer is really sort of a medium coverage concealer not the fullest coverage but i wanted to be able to see like how much of a difference that corrector makes with a concealer that's not giving me like the most coverage so what do we think definitely very brightening even though this shade is not like way too light for my skin tone or anything like it's pretty similar in depth to my skin tone but it just has that very like salmony undertone to it and yeah it's very brightening so i will give it that so there's that corrector i have a few more things to test for makeup revolution today that actually came in pr that i'm really excited about including these two baking powders so we have their banana baking powder and the translucent baking powder yesterday i tried the translucent one on my under eyes and i was actually really really impressed so this comes in like a container like this and it has a little shaker on top the only thing is if you shake it into the lid which i assume is what you're supposed to do it's going to be hard to fit a like a big face powder brush in there so i'm still trying to figure out the best way to use this for the face. I'll probably just use like a small brush all over my face. And I don't have any cream cheek products that I'm trying today. So I'm gonna go ahead and powder now. Um, and I'm gonna use, let's actually try, let's try both of these powders. Let's try the banana powder on the under eyes. Whoa, so much of that just came out. Oh my God, what? I wasn't prepared for that to come out so easily because this one did not shake out nearly that easily. But look at how much I just got. Ooh, that's so much. Maybe I'll try to dump it back in in a second. But so you can see it's been like a few minutes since I applied the corrector and you can definitely see like it does crease quite a bit because it is such a emollient formula. It definitely will sink into those fine lines if you don't set it. That's not too yellow. We've got like a salmon corrector. Now we're going in with a yellow powder. These powders are really, really finely milled. Like I said, yesterday I used the translucent powder on my under eyes and I thought it did such a good job setting that area without making it dry and tight feeling. And also it, it wasn't terribly matte either. It was kind of just like a natural satin finish. I'm using this with the brush that I typically use for my under eyes. This is the BK Beauty 113. It's kind of like a flatter setting brush really nice size for this but i wanted to make sure i use it with something i'm familiar with I'm just taking a little bit more i do feel like that gave my under eyes a little bit of a yellow tint i don't know if i love that um, i think i might prefer just the translucent one but you can see after i've set that area now some of that corrector is peeking through and giving me even more 
like shine under my eyes. I'm gonna take a little bit of just the translucent powder now to hopefully kind of take away some of that yellowness. Yeah, I don't know if the yellow powder is really for me. Maybe better for more medium skin tones. Yeah, I need to get like a little something, some sort of dish to use to shake this into if I wanna use it all over my face. I'm gonna use the translucent powder on the rest of my face. See, that one doesn't shake out nearly as fast as the banana one did. And I'm gonna use that same little brush because that's really all I can fit in this lid. And I'll just kind of use that all over. Yeah, I definitely think I like this translucent powder. This one, really nice, finely milled, a little goes a long way. And it sets my makeup, but it doesn't look really powdery or heavy. It just kind of like blurs the area. So really, really impressed with that so far. And if this ends up being good, this is a great value. Like this comes with over a full ounce of powder. And just for comparison, like my e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder, this comes with only 0.24 ounces, which I think is pretty standard for a loose powder. So this comes with like four times the amount. All right, I'm gonna have to set this, this aside and figure out what to do. I'll probably try to take the sifter off of this and just like dump this back in, but I'll do that. I'll do that later. <laughs> so for bronzer, I'm gonna use the one that's in my everyday makeup drawer right now. This is the AOA Studio Perfect Bronzer, actually a relatively new bronzer to my life. And I'm just gonna use this to warm up the face a bit. All right, the blush I wanna use, I feel like I keep layering this over other blushes, but I haven't really given this a good test just on its own. The Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush. I have the shade Shimmery Rose, and this is a beautiful, just like light pinky, rosy color. This is gonna be my only blush today for once. Usually I layer a few, but since I just wanna give this a good test. This is definitely one of those blushes that you can skip highlighter if you would like. I don't think it's quite as glowy as like Milani Luminoso, but it's up there. Like it's, it's definitely glowy. Like see that just kind of subtle sheen that it has. Yeah, it has just the right amount of glow to where it doesn't look like I'm applying a highlighter that's way too dark all over my cheeks. Cause sometimes that can be the case with glowy blushes like this. And I like how buildable it is too. Like this isn't the kind of blush that's going to kick up a whole bunch of powder when you dip your brush in. You can just kind of tap little by little and just build it up and it builds beautifully on itself. Which I prefer that over a blush that's just like immediately super pigmented. Okay, yeah, that is really pretty. And normally I probably would just go ahead and skip highlighter, but not today. <laughs> because I have some highlighters I want to try. All right, so Makeup Revolution, they sent over quite a few new cheek products. Some of these I'm going to leave unopened and just pass on. One of them is this uh, bronzer reloaded in the shade Long Weekend. This looks like a beautiful bronzer, but it looks like this only comes in like really light shades and it just doesn't have a good inclusive shade range. So this one I'm not going to feature on my channel. I thought that was kind of lame because Makeup Revolution says like one of their taglines is like always inclusive and it's like you this bronzer is like literally only going to work for <laughs> fair to light skin tones so don't know what you mean by that exactly. Then we have their blush reloaded in the shade Rose Kiss. This looks really pretty. I did try this yesterday. It was just a little bit too bright and pigmented for me and I already have other blushes in the same type of color. Like this is almost identical to my Milani cream blush in Nude Kiss, which for this type of shade, because it is a little bit deeper, I would prefer a cream that's a little bit just like easier to get a subtle wash of color with. This was just a little bit too bright for me. So that one I'm gonna go ahead and pass along. And then they also sent three highlighters. I really wanted this to work because this shade looks so pretty, but unfortunately this shade is just a bit too deep for my skin tone. This is the shade Make an Impact, and it's this really pretty rose gold duochrome shade. Ooh, this would be so pretty on 
like medium skin tones. Sad I can't use that, but that'll be passing on. So that leaves me with these two, which I have not used yet. We have the shades Raise the Bar and Just My Type. I'm thinking I'm going to try out Just My Type. That's this one here. It's a little bit more pinky, cool. Yeah, let's try out Just My Type. I think I'll probably go ahead and leave Raise the Bar unopened as well and just pass that on too. Like I said, I did try out that rose gold shade make an impact yesterday and it was very very intense like very blinding so i'm going to use a light hand and use my usual eco tools soft highlight brush this is a great like really fluffy highlighter brush that will help just diffuse it out a little bit so it's not quite so intense Let's see how that looks Ooh. yeah this is the best highlight brush hands down. Really, I just like tapped my brush in there very lightly three times, and that's how much impact I'm getting. So this is definitely, definitely a more intense highlighter. If you're into that still, I certainly am. Okay, this isn't exactly drugstore, but I am finally giving the Rare Beauty eyeshadow primer a test, I, which means I did finally finished if you've been keeping up my covergirl lid lockup eyeshadow primer that would not die for the longest time it is finally done so i'm finally ready to move on to this one it's a very thin formula definitely feels a lot different than the covergirl one i was using i did notice one time i used this my eyeshadows did crease slightly which is kind of kind of what i'm looking for my primer to prevent so I'm not sure if this is going to be a fave, but we'll give it another good wear test today. All right, so I don't have any brand new eyeshadows to try out, but I thought for today's look we could use the Alter Ego Goddess palette because I don't think I've used this one on camera yet. So, and I've been <laughs> raving about these Alter Ego palettes. I've been so impressed. I know I'm very late to the party with Alter Ego, but these are really good. So this one is meant to be a dupe for Natasha Denona Gold. I actually want to start with this deep matte green here and i'm actually going to start out my look with a wing with that shade so i want the look to be mostly neutral but i do want to have just like this green this like nice deep green wing in the outer corner i'm just going to take it in like halfway across my lid I'm just going back and forth between both sides and slowly building this up until I get a symmetrical wing. Keeping it pretty small. I don't want it too big and dramatic today. I know I always say that and then it ends up still big and dramatic, but I'm really going for a little baby wing today. Okay, so that's on. Now I want to take a little like smudge brush. This one's from Eco Tools called the Liner Smudge. And I'm not going to pick up any additional shadow yet, but I I just want to smudge out just like the top part of that. Okay, yes sir. Yes sir. These shadows really, they cooperate very well. I appreciate it. Like it blended without blending away or getting patchy or anything. And I didn't have to bring in any additional shadow to blend it out. And then I'm going to take some of the shade Valkyrie, this like green gold. And just tap that on my lid, just kind of from the center of the lid inward. But well, actually, no, I'm just going to scattering that all across and some of that is also going to overlap with the green liner all right then for the inner corner i'm going to grab some of the shade freya that shade has pretty much a clear base and then this light gold shift i used to have a single shadow from makeup geek like this a long time ago and i've missed it i think it was the shade was called voltage if i'm not mistaken i used to love this type of shade in the inner corner. It's just very brightening. Beautiful. Yeah, this is really pretty. 
This would make such a pretty look around the holidays with that green, oh my god, the green and gold. Are you kidding me? I'm so ready for the holidays. Well, not really. I'm more so ready for fall. All right, sound off in the comments below. Are you one of those people that's ready for fall? Or are you holding on to those last bits of summer? Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at that. All right, before, before we do mascara, I actually have a few different new setting sprays. Two of them I bought myself, the Flower uh, Seal the Deal Hydrating Setting Spray and the Revolution Calming Makeup Fixing Spray. These I purchased. And then these two also just arrived to me in that Makeup Revolution PR package. We have the Conceal and Define Infinite Mattifying Setting Spray, 16 hour long wear it says, and then the Revolution Sport Fix Lasting Hold Fixing Spray. So lots of options. All of these claim to help increase wear time. I'm thinking what I wanna do is try one on one side of my face and one on the other side and just see what what happens. It's hard to decide which two I want to use, but let's do the flower one so I can at least have one be flower and then one be makeup revolution. So we'll do the flower seal the deal on one side and let's do the let's do the sport fix lasting hold fixing spray on the other side. We'll just compare, see how see how they compare. Alright, I've got this sheet of paper so I can cover up one side. So let's do the flower side on the right. Got some big droplets. You tap those out. Then the other side will do the sport fix. Left side. All right, so this is the side with the flower. I do feel like it added a little bit of glow, definitely. Like, you can definitely see that up here, especially. And then this is the side with the sport fix. Yeah, so the sport fix, they say, is designed to keep you looking flawless through even the toughest of workouts. So I guess if you have to have makeup on while you're working out this could help keep it in place but i definitely feel like the flower one gave me more glow than the sport fix which i would have expected because this one is meant to be hydrating it's meant to give you a little bit of glow back and this one is more so just meant to lock things into place so we'll see how both sides wear throughout the day all right so i have a new mascara to try out today this is also from revolution it's the 5d lash pow volumizing mascara this has a very interesting packaging design so on, I was looking at the outer packaging and it says, no twist, push it up, innovative new, no twist cap mechanism. At first I thought they were talking about those mascaras that you can like twist and it changes the brush. So I thought they were talking about that, but actually what they mean is that to open it, you literally just push it down and it comes out which definitely is innovative. I have not seen that before in a mascara. It reminds me, I have like some lipsticks like that. This is the first time I've opened it. This is what the brush looks like. It's definitely, ooh, it's a little bit chubby. Not my favorite shape of brush. Um, they claim this is supposed to be volumizing. Dramatic multiplied false lash effect, explosive length. So it looks like it's just meant to give your lashes a very dramatic look. So let's try it out and It'll be good to get a good wear test on this and see if it smudges, because that's really that's really the true test for me. So so we're looking pretty subtle. Sometimes I do find that mascaras don't always perform the way that they're always going to on the first try. That actually, wow, that looks pretty good. This is I'm on coat number two now. And I'm going to try it on the lower lashes, too. See if I can get away with that without any smudging today. Okay, I am seeing some really good length. So here's how it closes. We'll just... Yeah, you just press it down and boom. Wow. So if you have, like, mobility issues or you have trouble twisting uh, caps, this could actually be a really useful design. That's cool. Even for this being the first application, I really like the way my lashes look. I think they look very voluminous, very fluttery, and long. This is really the kind of look that I want from mascara. So, so far I'm happy, but the true test will be to see if it smudges. So I will report back with a, a wear test. All right, and I don't have any new lip products to test. So I just went in with my Koki lip liner in Nude and then my Burt's Bees lip crayon in Santorini Sunrise for just this like peachy nude. Lip. I think that goes nicely with the gold on the eyes. So that right there is the completed look. 
I actually am really happy with everything so far, but I'm really curious to see how those setting sprays affect the wear time of my makeup, how that mascara wears, and just overall how all this makeup wears. Also that eyeshadow primer. That we're also testing today. So I'm gonna go about my day, actually film another video after this. I'll be back at the very end of the night to show you how things looked by then. So I will see you soon. Okay, it is 9 p.m. I think it's about 11 hours since I applied this makeup and I'm here to show you what it looks like now. I did get a little bit of creasing with this eyeshadow. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm gonna zoom you like all the way in. Do you see how it's kind of faded and there's a little bit of a crease there. Also, I felt like that green shadow used as liner, it transferred up into my crease. Normally that wouldn't happen. I think that was also due to the Rare Beauty eyeshadow primer. Comparing either side, I don't see a huge difference, but I do feel like the side with the Makeup Revolution Sport Fix fixing spray did hold up just a little bit better. I do feel like the side with the Flower Beauty Spray, it's looking a little dry in this region. Not, not quite as fresh as this side. The Essence Blush really hasn't faded too much. I feel like it is still very visible and I really like the way that blush looks. I think in the future I probably would skip highlighter when I wear that blush because I, I like the sheen it gives on its own and I don't necessarily want to interrupt that with another highlighter, but I do really like the way that Revolution highlighter looks as well. I think I'd probably just pair it with a less glowy blush next time because that highlighter is so intense, but both of those held up well. The Here's the best part and what I'm happiest about is, you may have noticed, but the mascara really has not smudged and this eye I gave it a good test today because this eye was watering so badly earlier. I kept wiping my eye, so I did kind of like wipe away some of that mascara. But I was able to do that without it getting flaky, without it smearing or anything. So I would say that Revolution mascara is a win so far. I also just really like the way it made my lashes look. Like they look super long and fluttery. What else? And then, yeah, as far as the setting powder, I don't like the way that banana setting powder looks on my under eyes. It's just a little bit too yellow for me. I think that would be better suited to a medium skin tone. Um, so I probably will not keep that one in my permanent collection, but I do so far really like that translucent setting powder. But I am very tired. I'm going to wash my face soon, so that is going to be my little wear test check-in. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget, I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership. And tomorrow I will be doing a live stream for my patrons and channel members. We're going to be doing a live palette bingo using actually the Alter Ego Goddess palette. This is the palette that they voted for. So we're going to do a live palette bingo with that. It's going to be a ton of fun. So check it out. I'll have it linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye!